Hi, good afternoon everyone and welcome to another episode of the Semi Conversations Podcast. Today our guest is Miss Danielle Bartholomew. She graduated summer cum laude from New York Institute of Technology in 2018 with a Bachelor of Science in, Medic- in Mechanical Engineering. She became the first ever science, mathematics and research for a transformation smart scholar at New York Tech in 2016. In 2022, she completed her a Master's of Science in Biomedical Engineering at Columbia University. Ms. Bartholomew, welcome to the podcast. So, uh, you're still muted. Oh, sorry. Thank you for having me. No problem. So, my first question what led you to pursue a career in mechanical engineering well during secondary school i was really passionate about physics it was i guess one of my favorite subjects after human biology and it seemed at the time like it could lead me to um i guess more possibilities and i also knew people who studied mechanical engineering um and so yeah it seems like a good choice at the time okay can you describe what's a day in like of mechanical engineer uh well the field is so broad okay uh, you could be in energy you can be in manufacturing even biomechanics prosthetics um, and you could also be in construction like design for buildings so me personally that's that's where I am I uh, work in the construction field so designing building systems and also uh, civil works projects like flood control projects so typically I would wake up early I like to start early and finish early. Um, sometimes my day would involve modeling. So whatever we design, we have to model it. So I would typically start off with that. And then by the mid morning, I might have a meeting with my with my team to discuss any progress that we made, any issues. Uh, and it's usually like that for the middle part of the day. And then Towards the ending, I'm more or less back on my personal tasks, which is like designing. And I typically work from home a percentage of the time. So yeah, each day is typically similar. Meetings, modeling, pretty much like that. All right. If you weren't into tech or STEM or ICT or mechanical engineering, what would you have done? I would be in medicine for sure. Okay. And why medicine? Well, medicine has actually been my passion for a long time and my goal. And I I chose mechanical engineering to help to help me financially along the journey. But okay. I think yeah, medicine has always been something that I, I I, I dreamed of doing or being in. Me too. Um, <laughs> what are some requirements to pursue a career in mechanical engineering? All right, I am a high school student and I want to do mechanical engineering. Could you give me like, what should I do maybe in high school? How can I um, maybe like some guidance then? Okay, I would say pursue physics and math for CSEC, definitely physics and math, if possible, biology and chemistry. Um, Because we do, depending on the field you go to, you do do it, you do have to know a bit of chemistry. And if you want to go in biomedical engineering, like I I did eventually, um, I think biology would also help uh, doing that for CSEC. And also for CAPE, 
I would also recommend doing math, um, physics, of course. And if you can do biology and chemistry, that would help. And um, as much as you can research, I mean, Google is very prevalent these days and there's a lot of information out there. So depending on where you want to live or where you want to go to college, I would say research uh, Google, maybe how to get into the university that you want to get into. Google the type of jobs in mechanical engineering, um, just to get yourself familiar and ask as much questions as you can to people who may be in the field or who are teachers in the field. Things like that definitely helps. So how has your career journey been so far? Uh, I would say interesting and interesting. Um, what I the way that I planned it, it never it never actually turned out that way. So, I learned a lot. Um, and of course, as you're growing, or I should say, as I'm growing, my passions and interests sometimes change. You know, as I learn new things, discover new things, and so, I would say it's ever evolving my career is ever evolving and even my desires and so yeah I'm, i would say stem is a is a curious field to be in and something that you know of or you might be in now it may not be the same in 5 years or 10 years cuz technology is always improving so i would say yeah it's been an interesting journey so far Okay. And what are some obstacles you would have faced and how did you overcome them along your career um, journey? Obstacles I faced, I would say being away from family. Um, because I moved I moved to the US from Grenada. So being away from my parents and my closest loved ones is very tough. Even though, you know, you make friends or you may have relatives. Where you go, sometimes it's still hard to be away from those who support you the most. So I would say that has been the biggest challenge. But fortunately, with technology, I was able to stay connected as long as I could have with uh, my parents and those who truly supported me. So I guess in some ways, I overcome that challenge of not being physically near them by talking to them every day over the phone, uh, making sure I'm, uh, I was in constant communication with them. What else? Yeah, I would say that's how I overcome that, just making time to talk to them uh, over the phone. And that helped me a lot. And let me see, what are the challenges? Other challenge I would say is being very young in uh, virtually a new place because I, I grew up in Grenada so coming to the states to live was really different and the state is it's a big place so it could be challenging and daunting and I think to overcome that I just uh, I listened a lot to my parents and um, other mentors who would have helped me and guided me um, I think that helped me overcome any challenges that I would have had, like fear, anxiety. Um, yes, I would say, yeah, just being in constant contact with my support system helped me to overcome being in a new and different environment. Okay, and my other question would be, um, how do you know your success? So yes, you might have a degree, you might be working in the field. How do you know your success? Your success? How, what does success look like for you? Uh, for me, success looks like being content um, with where I'm at and having all my basic needs met. Um, I think having a degree and going to school, yes, those are goals and and they they might be part of our checklist, but once you achieve that, it's like 
you kind of need something to keep working towards. And after you achieve your degrees, you're probably be trying to constantly achieve something and which is good. I think that's good. But for me, I'm trying to redefine what success means to me. And I think being content and happy, healthy, um, that's I think that's pretty important. Um, yeah, and I would also say financial freedom, being able to not have to worry um, about expenses. I think in the world that we live in today, and even just being out on your own, it could get challenging depending on the field that you're in or where you're located. So I think being able to take care of yourself, whether you have a degree or not, I think that's that's a very successful achievement, I would say. So being content and being able to survive in this world and take care of yourself, I think that's that would be my measure of success. Okay. Um what are some of the most important skills for a mechanical engineer or you think that they should have based on I'm guessing your work experience? Let's see. Definitely um uh, I guess team player skills. Um, well, being able to work in a team, um, being able to work with different kinds of people and different personalities, I would say that's an important skill to have. Apart from your, be I guess being good at math or physics, I would say you have to be able to work in a team, and also. Uh, let's see. Working, being able to work diligently because STEM is not an easy field or it could be challenging. And so knowing how to manage um, your challenges and your frustrations as they come along, I think that would that's that's a very important skill. Okay, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that mechanical engineers face? Or, or do you, can you list some? Um, I, I could probably think of my experiences. Uh, sure. Oh, uh, what should I say? Um, well, for me, college was challenging. I would say it, it's fun, but you know, when you're taking all your engineering classes and so on, it could be it could be challenging at times. And having to study for exams, um, I would say that's one challenge. Getting past getting your your bachelor's degree or your master's degree. Um and for some it some might face challenges with uh getting a job depending on where they're living um maybe that might be an example for someone living i don't know i can't think of places right now but it depends on on where you are um also let's see another well i wouldn't really say it's a challenge but the field is constantly evolving and growing so you have to keep abreast of the latest uh, technology and use. I think that helps, but I wouldn't really call it a challenge. It's um, if you if you're definitely passionate and interested about the field, you'll try to keep abreast with it. Um, maybe another challenge would be working working with a team sometimes with different personalities, and if you're working in a large team. Um, sometimes that could be dif difficult depending on the project or if you're trying to meet a certain deadline. Sometimes you might have uh, a design or something that you have to figure out and it might take time to research. Similarly to college, if you're in school and you have a problem and you're trying to solve it, sometimes it could take you time to figure it out or understand it. So it's the same thing I would say in the field. Um, 
because as an engineer, you're, you're solving problems, trying to come up with solutions. So sometimes the problem that you're trying to solve might be difficult and it could be challenging to come up with a solution. You mentioned keeping abreast with, I would say, latest trends or technology. How do you or how do mechanical engineers keep abreast with um, technology as the field is always ever evolving? I would say being subscribed to newsletters, um, societies. So like here in the United States, there's a lot of different professional organizations and they they have magazines, they have newsletters that they usually send out to members. So that's that's one way I like to keep abreast. Like I would subscribe to the major science um, science media platforms i follow them on social media so whenever they post something and they're pretty active um i think they're even on tiktok i'm not on tiktok but you know they're they they're a lot of these big uh social media platforms are very much active in the social media space so i try to follow them and that's pretty much how I stay abreast, looking at the news. Um, and also networking and talking to my colleagues um, who might be directly involved in something cutting edge. or So yeah, I would say definitely try to subscribe to professional organizations and also follow um, a lot of the science and STEM social media platforms or news platforms that helps. All right, thank you for that response. Um, and my final question would be, what advice you would give? General advice to anybody who might want to follow in your footsteps. Um, definitely try and research uh what you might be interested in even if it's not mechanical engineering but try to gather as much information you can about the field because oftentimes the more you you start finding out about the field the more you might like it or the more you might realize it's not for you so i would say definitely start by researching and if in fact you do find yourself interested in, in a particular field, I would say try to see if you can reach out to people who are in the field and um, ask them about what their, their, their journeys look like to get more information. And also try as much as you can to pay attention in school and even use the resources at your school if there are clubs, um, activities, try to get involved as much as you can because opportunities are often presented um, in many different ways. So wherever there's an opportunity for you to be involved or for you to get information or research on a STEM field, I would say take grab grab hold of that opportunity and also try to stay focused and uh, give yourself grace and know that we, because we, we are constantly changing, what we might be interested in at 16 years old may not, what, may not be what we might be interested in at 30 years old, and that's fine. We are constantly learning and evolving, so don't feel pressured to stick to something if you feel like your passion and your desires are changing. Just try to follow what, what you are passionate about. I like that. Because for me, I um when I was younger, I loved medicine. My grandmother would always say, you're going to be a doctor. And today, I don't think I'm going to be a doctor anymore. I might be in yeah. IT field or some other field. One and thing, that's fine. That's true. Because as you, like you mentioned, as you grow, you learn more you you get more data and google google is always here 
whatever is dear you can just research or you can maybe find a mentor in the field that you might want to go into and you can be able to get uh out your advice um you mentioned networking yep do you have any tips for um anybody who might want to do networking like any effective networking tips um one thing i would say is linkedin i think linkedin might be underrated in some in some countries and locations but as for the us i feel like it's it's a big it seems to be a big part of um, a lot of professionals prof a lot of professionals journey so they use linkedin to get jobs meet new people so if you can have a profile and make sure it's up to date and you never know you can meet people from anywhere from europe from japan um, who may just have an opportunity for you so definitely make use of linkedin and um you can even start more local so see what's there in your your town or your country there might be professional groups or so or even in your school like clubs i would definitely say start from there um and even on our traditional no well, i shouldn't call it traditional but other so social media platforms like facebook and so on there are a lot of groups now like if you just search you could probably find any type of group that you can think of and so in these groups people with like minded um passions would like post different things and have conversations going so i think that's another way to network because we may not be in an area um where we can access a lot of i guess professional organizations or groups so what the other way to do it is online definitely so linkedin social media groups trust me they're out there know that we have well i shouldn't say know that we have but know that the internet is more prevalent and there's more information there you can do a lot of things virtually these days so i do hope our viewers are taking the advice and like you mentioned with linkedin i um i have a linkedin account and I met a guy from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, we oh, both share wow. the same passion. And every time I talk on my podcast or we're having a meeting, he he's just so supportive. Even though we're not in, in the same country, he is supportive. So you do make some genuine connections. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Bartholomew, for sharing with us today. Um, for our viewers, be sure to follow us on social media. That is on Facebook and Instagram at STEMI.conversations and on the major podcast sites at STEMI Conversations and on YouTube as well. Thank you and enjoy the remainder of your day.